Good morning. It's time for another edition of the House Whisperer Show on WWDB Talk 860, where every house has a story. Stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof to the basement, featuring professional home inspector Jack Milne. I'm Barry Reisman, and Jack Milne is here, and Jack has a phenomenal topic, as always, for today. Jack, how you doing today? Great, Barry. Uh, as I like to say on Sundays, wake up, smell the coffee, and put on the house whisper. Absolutely. So, so, yeah, Barry, today's topic is actually pretty light. It's called decorating rooms, and it's more than picture hanging. So uh, before we start in, let's thank my sponsors, uh, Bucksmont Inspections, uh, Rob Bowie. Uh, he's out of Sellersville, Pennsylvania, but does serve the Bucks and Montgomery County areas. Uh, he does uh, wander into New Jersey every once in a while. But let's give um, websites today and, and get to know these folks. They're excellent. Uh, so Rob's email is BucksmontInspections.com. Borough Exterminating, like I said last, last week, I'm going to have Rob Bruno come on in a couple weeks and, and talk about termite uh, uh, mitigation, how to get rid of them, and really the laws that have changed uh, in, when it comes to applying chemicals in, your, in and around your home. Uh, so their website is BoroughExterminating.com. Great company, third generation. I love them. Pest Blaster, uh, they deal, again, with radon, mold, wood-destroying insects, pest removal, and repair. So, again, if you have that pesky squirrel that's made its way into the attic and sometimes other critters, uh, why don't you give them a buzz? And uh, their website is PestBlaster.com. BrainFlushGear.com, it gets no simpler than that. I mean, <laughs> but that is their name, and, and they're sticking to it. Uh, but, again, any type of um, sportswear that you may think of, if you have any ideas for family reunions, motorcycle trips, team uh, concepts, reach out to BrainFlushGear.com. They'll come up with something that's really unique for, for your, uh, for your uh, company, uh, team, or family. And then, of course, Tri-County Inspection Company. Our website is TCInspect.com. We've served over 71,000 clients since 1985. And uh, we are there to help you. And we have uh, inspectors dispersed uh, in and around uh, Bucks and Montgomery County, as well as New Jersey, to serve your needs. So, again, get to know us. Get to know um, how we can help you when buying and selling real estate. And, again, the website is tcinspect.com. So for the email box today, um, I heard from Brett from Lansdale. And he actually visited the archives and revisited the show called DIY, uh, Do It Yourself. Uh, So his little comment was, Jackie, be proud of me. I listened to the show about light switches and receptacles, turned off the power and went to work. Two switches and five receptacles, I was done. It took me about uh, one and a half hours, uh, something that I've never done before, and and now I can see the results. Uh, So thanks for the help. And, you know, just, you know, I emailed Brett, you know, I, you know, I, I, I hope you're listening because this show is now an extension of your vision. Um, lighting, wainscoting, crown molding, two tones. Uh, man, I can keep going, but, you know, we're time limited. So, Brett, thanks again. So uh, any emails, uh, please send them to thehousewhispershow at gmail.com. Or for any previous shows, visit thehousewhispershow.com. So, anyway, uh, let's dig into this segment. Uh, Again, today's topic, decorating rooms is more than picture hanging. So, let's start with the simple stuff. Picture hanging, how about that? Um, Any type of picture should really complement the space it will hang. You know, keep in mind that bedrooms are different than dining rooms, which are different than living rooms. And, And pictures are color, they're accent, and they're conversation pieces. So, you really want to choose accordingly. But once you and your significant other have made the choice and location, pictures or artwork should offer uh, some sense of balance. So width and height of the, of the work should be displayed. Too high or too low uh, can really make a, a difference uh, visually. So I, I always tell clients, measure accordingly. You know, measure twice and then make your mark. You know, so what you want to do is find the center of the door jammed to the wall, or the window to the wall, or the headboard of the bed. It really doesn't matter, but you don't want to be off center. So using a pencil, small draw a line where you, you think, with a pencil, by the way, not a Sharpie, 
where you think where the center of the room or center of the picture is going to be. And of course, use a tape measure, okay? Uh, this will mark the top of the picture. And what I do is then I stretch the wire supporting the picture to measure from the top of the wire to the frame. If it's six inches from the center mark, then go down five and three quarter inches. And then this way, you're not gonna miss that quarter of an inch, but you may hide the small pencil mark that you made. So just in case it doesn't erase or it can't be removed, um, you, ha you hid that little blemish. So again, measure down from that point. You know, we're gonna use that six inches. We're gonna go down five and three quarter, and then, and then mark again. Put the hook point um, at that new mark and then nail away and your picture's hung. So any heavy artwork that requires two nails, I guess that you use a level, but you wanna separate your hooks by about three to four inches, you know, so that you can balance the picture and support it at the same time. So, of course, you know, if you've got a big picture, don't use a small, a small hook. If you have a picture door, don't, or a, um, excuse me, a, a pocket door, uh, don't use a big nail. Because uh, if you drive that nail in too far, not only have you hung the picture, you have hung up the door. It will not open anymore without some means of repair. Um, fun rooms. Um, my living room, we actually converted to a pool room uh, probably about 20 years ago. So, you know, my point is everybody's take to a space is different. So we saw a room that held extra furniture we really didn't need. And we wanted to convert it to a room that sports memorabilia. Uh, I have a tarpon, a zero mackerel, a barracuda on the wall. I've got masks from all over the world, pictures of the kids, you know, through their sports years. But bottom line, see how you want to take the space in your home and make it your own. I know pool tables may not be for everybody, but I do enjoy their kids and their friends hanging out and enjoying the differences you know, uh, where we took kind of a dead room and really, really turned it into a room that was alive. So, you know, every, again, uh, little things like trim. Um, I want to talk about chair molding, crown molding, pieces of wood that separates the room either horizontal, uh, horizontally and can offer different colors above and below the chair rail can really set a room off in many different ways. And chair molding, you know, we usually associate that with dining rooms because if you back up your chair, you don't want to bang uh, the wall because, again, that can leave a mark. And especially if you have small children, they want to get out of, uh, out of around the table real quick, so they slide their chairs back. And so chair rail actually uh, has a purpose to it. But, again, it does also provide a break. So I've been in many homes where they'll use one tone of paint above the chair rail and a different tone of paint below the chair rail, really makes it, uh, sets it off nice. I've also seen where wallpaper, uh, believe it or not, wallpaper, uh, can still be used as a break point uh, and the chair rail. So you can either take it from the top of the seat, you know, let's call it the top of the wall to the chair rail, and then offer a color down below it. But uh, crown molding is another decorative trim between the ceiling and the wall. But honestly, folks, for, for crown molding, you don't want to do this one yourself. Um, every piece should reach from corner to corner. and has to be cut precisely for it to fit. We try not to um, um, offer a joint with uh, crown molding if you don't have to. But, uh, Barry, why don't we take a break real quick, because I want to talk about different types of wood okay. uh, that can be used for these two accents. All right. Well, we will do that. We will take a break, and we'll come right back. But just one quick note. You've mentioned about the living rooms, and, boy, you hit home with me because in our house, the most expensive room in our house, I mean, with the decorating and everything, is the living room. And guess what? Nobody ever goes in there. <laughs> nobody. Nobody. Ever. Ever. Well, my mom used to put up the museum bars. It's, and, yeah. Uh, or else I got, you know, got my butt spanked that was always so i never had really fond memories of my uh, of my living room that's why when we bought this house i looked into this space and i said i know we can do something de definitely different yeah yeah then you've, you've just given me some incentive okay we're gonna take a break and come right back and listen to the house whisperer show on wwdb and uh, jack milne is the house whisperer and uh, we'll be back right after 
these very important messages. Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years. Serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties, all inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-5640 or send an email request to boroinspects at verizon.net. That's 610-586-5640 or email at boroinspects at verizon.net. Specially created t-shirts by BrainPlushGear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport. BrainPlushGear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles, wave runners, surfboards, snowmobiles, or skateboards, it can be priceless. They offer custom artwork including silk screening, transfers, and embroidery. Speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own brain flush visit brainflushgear.com or email them at contact at brainflushgear.com for your septic inspection and testing needs please consider bucks mod inspections they've been serving the bucks and montgomery county areas for over 15 years as members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, the Pennsylvania Association of Sewage Enforcement Officers, and the Pennsylvania Association for Professional Soil Scientists, Bucksmont Inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement. Please call Rob Bowie at 215-669-4213 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer Show. As the summer months quickly arrive and the temperatures gradually rise, so do the odds of all those filthy and unwanted critters invading your home like rodents, roaches, termites, and flies. Oh, my. This summer, if you want to feel safe and secure from a possible creeping, crawling disaster, do yourself a favor and call the exterminating experts at Pest Blaster for all your pest control needs, including tests for radon and mold. Please visit PestBlaster.com and you'll be sold. 215-295-5555. Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 25 years. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties, serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They've performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors, as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. For all of your real estate transactions, Transactions. Call Tri-County Inspections at 215-295-2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856-853-4224. In PA, call 215-295-2030. In New Jersey, 856-853-4224. And we are back with Jack Bill in the House Whisperer at WWDB. A uh, great topic today. I'm enjoying this this whole conversation about decorating. And and Jack, uh, uh, back back to you. Well, thank you, Barry, very much. Before the uh, commercial, we were talking about types of trim, uh, be it chair molding, crown molding, and wainscoting. And I'm going to hit on wainscoting in a couple minutes. But you know, one thing that I like to do is make accents. So a lot of people like to paint wood. I'm a stainer, and, and I like, there's so many different unique stains out there, uh, from like a mahogany to a cherry to a walnut to an oak. And I find that if you add these accent pieces, especially crown molding and or chair railing, um, it sets the room apart. From every other space in your house, if you can't, if you don't want to do the baseboard, you don't want to do the door trim. That's one thing, but keep the chair rail different and keep that crown molding different, because you have to buy different types of trim. If you're going to paint, then you can get away with something called finger joint, 
it's it's definitely a lot cheaper, but it's used by various pieces of wood. So if you actually stain this material, you're going to see different graining patterns. But if you want to stain the wood, then you have to buy wood that's called clear. And it's it's one solid piece of pine, and it's gorgeous. And you can get different types. You can get colonial trim. You can get what they call clam or ranch trim or sanitary trim. You can get broad trim, short trim. There's all kinds of trim out there. So, you know, before you really dive into the project, go shopping and, and see what's available and, um, you know, and, and make it your best. Uh, Toll Brothers and some of the larger builders actually use crown molding on their second floor ceilings to hide what's called truss lift. And then what they do is they use a smaller piece of trim about four inches below it, and then they paint the whole thing white. So it looks like the, the trim is much broader than it is, but basically they're doing this little trick with two pieces of, of distinct lumber. So, you know, think about that. I mean, I think today everything is, is painted. I think some people think that painted or stained wood was, you know, was hot stuff in the 60s or 70s. But, um, you know, again, uh, you know, have a professional help you uh, think of staining. Um, it's not going to take them very long to do the work, uh, but if it's done wrong, um, it's going to make a difference. And again, this room is going to jump. Wayne's coating in the old days was actually done with real wood paneling, shaved at a nice 45 degree angle, and finished uh, with trim. Um, I see this in, in really nice libraries and high end homes. I also see it in foyers. Sometimes it goes up steps. Um, but, man, that's high-end bucks. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be that complicated or expensive with the right trim. And if it's balanced property, properly, it offers um, a baseline um, it, whereby you're, you're creating these squares and or rectangles Again, you can put wallpaper within these squares and rectangles that you're making, paint it a different color, um, and it's really going to offer a nice complement uh, to, again, a room, a foyer, a stairway. And I'll tell you what, it's simple, and your neighbors are going to say, how did you do that? And it's basically four pieces of trim. My good buddy, um, um, his name is Harley, did it, and, and he he took me into his house and He's not the handiest guy. He's learned a lot through the years, but man, he knocked my socks off when he when he did this in his foyer and up a stairway. Um, so simple things like instead of having a painted railing, make it a stained railing. And as I tell people, anytime it's painted, it's going to get fingerprints on it anyway. So you know, just updating the banister uh, that may go from the bottom of your stairway. Uh, up to the midpoint of the wall, add another section of railing to the top of the ra uh, of the stairway. Little compliments like that. It's in your. It's at your front door. It's the first thing that people see when they walk into your home, and they're going to say, "Wow!" And that's what we're out to do today: is is get that wow effect. Now, lighting. Let's talk about that. Lighting. There's all different kinds of lighting that can really offset these rooms. We have high hats, spotlights, strip lighting, accent lighting, spotlights, half lights. The choice is staggering, but you really want to have a good discussion with your electrician and be specific as to what accent you want and the focus you desire. So what I mean by that is sometimes you want to focus on a particular painting that might be over your fireplace or a piece of art that might be over your sofa. And, and there's so many distinct ways of, of generating soft light, hard light, balanced light, dimmed light, uh, so that you can really uh, set the mood. Uh, and I think that's what it's all about. And, you know, a, a good electrician can, can tell you what to do, and, and he's going to discuss ways and how to do it. Now, my electrician, Glenn Aust, who, who you uh, may have heard on the air in the past, he has this little statement that he tells me whenever he comes to my house, and he has to make holes. So it always makes me nervous. But if lighting crosses under ceiling joists, then the drywall has to be cut away just enough to pass the wire under that framing member. The next opening that he's going to have to make is going to be uh, above a switch uh, to, at the wall joint to pass the wire into the ceiling cell. So these are two small areas where he makes holes but can be easily patched and painted. So my thought is that if you're going to in include lighting, do not paint your walls and ceilings. 
until after the electrician is done because there's definitely going to have to be patching going on. Um, by the way, halogens are out and LEDs are in. And today, most uh, LEDs are dimmable. And I did speak to Glenn a, a week or so ago, and I'm going to have him back on the air uh, soon. Uh, and we want to talk about outdoor lighting because it's summer and I think the time is right. But he also asked that we spend some time and talk about the differences between halogens, LEDs, and some of these new green bulbs. So we're going to do that, too. Now, like I said, you may have to repaint or touch up uh, at a minimum. And, and, again, especially if you followed my advice on the May 25th show, and now you have to make these changes that were not planned, uh, welcome to home ownership. So, depending, you may still have to... Um, you know, uh, pull out those rollers that may be wrapped up in your in your shop. Uh, sh you know, those shop right bags we talked about. And if they are dry, discard them. If they're still moist, uh, they they may still work. So let's roll. And if you do touch up and you notice flashing, flashing is where new paint does not quite blend with the old paint. You might have to paint that whole wall again. Um, you know, and so um, you got to find a place to to offer your cut ins. Again, especially between wall and ceilings and corners. If you're using a flat, chances are, even if the paint is a few weeks old, it should blend in. But semi-glosses and eggshells may not. So one thing to keep in mind as you plan your room, try to do your painting last and not first. Um, flooring. Uh, now that everything else is done, what about the part that we walk on? And you always do want to do the floor last, okay? So you have to think about what we have as a floor system now. Is it carpeting over plywood, over hardwood, over oriented strand board, uh, or is your room on a slab? So options are available to suit your need and budget. And I always say, like, what budget? You know, you should always have a budget uh, before you start, you know, decorating. So uh, chances are by the time you've done, the, you know, everything else, you're, you may have blown the budget all, already. But... Um, but the flooring is always last, and so that's why you always want to plan and estimate first. But at the same time, please allow like a 10% uh, over budget for considerations, and that's how it should work. But, hey, we're human. We work hard. We pay too much in taxes, and so now it's, now it's our turn. So, again, budget. try to budget no more than 15% over your budget, if that makes sense. Um, and... That way you will have some extra funds to wrap up the room. But let's go back to flooring um, before we have to sign off. First off, slabs. Uh, my suggestion is to do engineered hardwoods, uh, especially if it's a high traffic area like 95 or 476. Uh, carpeting in family rooms with kids, dads, and pets will not last. Engineered hardwoods uh, and not a laminate, okay, will stand up to all abuses. Stay away from the laminates, folks. If it gets wet, it delaminates. Um, when I did my family room over, I did mine in a distressed hickory uh, because at some point it's going to be distressed. And, and it actually looks the part and it looks the same. And I knew at our house the kitchen drops into the family room, left is the laundry room and the pad room, right is the way outside. So our carpet got killed about five times uh, over, you know, regardless of the strand offered. So... If you have a high, you know, traffic area, actually stay away from the carpet and think about hardwoods. And again, stay away from laminates. Uh, it doesn't make much, take much to get them to, to delaminate. And again, the edges are going to lift and your hard-earned bucks are actually going to be thrown away. If you have hardwood, I mean real hardwood, not Bruce or other manufacturers, this material is actually three-quarters of an inch thick and can be sanded and refinished with a water-based urethane. Um, and honestly, once it's sanded and sealed, there's nothing better. If you have a Bruce floor, you can get one sanding out of that, and then, folks, that's it. So you can sand the, the aftermarket real hardwood floors, but not by much. So, um, so the motto is, you know, plan ahead. You want to talk to your carpenters. You want to talk to your electricians, your painters, your floor specialists. And, and turn, you know, those special rooms into really spectacular areas where friends and family walk into and say, wow. Because, you know, if you got that wow effect, you did good. So um, next week, 
you know, I'm not sure what the topic's going to be, but I'm sure it's going to be something that we're going to want to discuss and that you want to hang your hat on because we're going to make that house work to the best it can. So, Barry, do you have any questions or comments? I, I do, actually. I do have a question. I know some people, including myself, who have a house that was built back in the 70s when the fake paddling was the thing of, uh, of the day. And now everybody wants to get rid of it. Can you paint over that, or what, what can you do to get rid of it? Well, very, very, very good point. Um, when I bought my house, when I pushed on the paneling, I had nothing behind it. So we actually used a spackle and filled the gaps, and then I papered over it. Um, so if you have paneling at home, folks, press on it hard. And if, you, and if your, your hand does not recede back into the wall, then you have drywall behind it. And now there is a chance that your paneling was, was either glued or just face nailed to the drywall. So you won't really know what you have until you take it off. But today, you can get quarter-inch drywall, and you can either put that over the paneling or you can put that over the, uh, the damaged drywall without having to take the old drywall off. You know, one more little word of advice. If, it, if you do take the paneling down and you decide you want to take the drywall down, do yourselves a favor and re-insulate the wall to an R15. Uh-huh. Take advantage yeah. of it. Yep. And then have a sheet, professional sheet rocker come back in drywall you prep it for paint and there's nothing better and if you run, want to run your stereo wires or your speaker wires to that new flat screen tv that's the time so before i extend over my my time i do want to say always spend time with friends and family and i look forward to talking to you next week on the house whisperer and tune in again next week for another edition of the house whisperer show with professional home inspector jack mill we're here every week at this time To listen to previous programs or if you have any questions, visit thehousewhisperershow.com. This is Barry Reisman, and thank you for listening to WWDB.